Now, in the fourth cycle, the MOSFET is turned off. The current across inductor starts decreasing and it charges the capacitor and there is no current flowing through the MOSFET. The voltage across MOSFET will be equal to the input voltage plus flyback voltage of the inductor L1 and there is no current flowing through the MOSFET. The voltage across MOSFET will be equal to the input voltage plus flyback voltage of the inductor L1 but inductor L2 comes into the picture. It induces the flyback voltage so the power to the load is provided by the inductor L2 and output capacitor because these components had stored the energy and charge in the earlier cycle of the converter and the inductor current L2 decreases linearly which keeps the output voltage constant. So this third and fourth cycle repeats throughout the process and we get the regulated inverting output voltage. In easier words, when the MOSFET is on, the inductor L1 and L2 stores the energy from the input and series capacitor respectively. When the MOSFET is off, these inductors release the stored energy so L1 charges the series capacitor and L2 provides the output power and this is how a tube converter